Chapter 33 Three weeks later, Dominic sat in Dave Santos's office at the Child Welfare Department. I know it hasn't been easy for you these last few years, Dave said. I know you've had some bad breaks. I'm sorry about this last family deciding to move to California, but I've been looking, and I think I found the right one this time. They're nice people, Dominic. They have a big house with a yard, and two other boys live with them. And this is the best part. The kids were foster kids that they've adopted. They want a family, and they are willing to adopt an older child. It won't be like some of those other homes, where you were just there on a temporary basis. If you can just bear with us and try one more time, this could be the one. Now, let me find their file. As Dave shuffled through a pile of papers on his desk, Dominic thought about his modern American dream family. Then he thought about his familia in Italy. How would he ever find a, famili a family he could love as much as he had loved them? He closed his eyes as their voices filled his ears. He could, fe he could hear Francesco whispering to Violetta. He could hear Salvatore dreaming aloud about cowboys and Antonio singing along to gentle notes from his concertina. So, what do you say, Dominic? Dave asked, looking up from his file. Are you ready to try another one? Can I tell them we'll meet with them tomorrow morning? Dominic opened his eyes. I'm ready, he said. Oh, and by the way, Dave added, the father is a veterinarian, so the kids have lots of pets. Dominic's eyebrows shot up. What kind of pets? he asked. Oh, let me see. There were dogs, a cat, a snake, an iguana, a parrot, and a goat? Dominic asked. A goat? Dominic grinned. They make the best pets, he said. I don't know about goats, Dave laughed. We'll have to wait and see. You'll continue to stay with the Jensens until they're ready to move out to California next week. Or, if we can settle on this family tomorrow, you could be moved in by Friday. Later that night, as he lay in the darkness of his bedroom at the Jensen's house, Dominic couldn't stop thinking about his adventure. Had he really gone to Italy? Had he really met his family? Was Francesco really his great-grandfather? Somehow, he was sure it was all true. Dominic reached for the golden key around his neck. He rubbed his fingers over the worn initials SC. Then he thought about the boy who first found that key so long ago in that far-off place, and how he had wished for it to unlock some buried treasure. Outside Dominic's window, the traffic sped by while the noise from the TV echoed off the walls in the room beside him. A man and a woman shouted in the apartment over his head, and yet the only sound that Dominic heard was the sound of a small concertina as it accompanied the rustlings of olive leaves in the wind. Maybe the key had unlocked a treasure after all, he thought. For now he understood how he had always been and would always be a part of a family, and he could never lose those he loved, not completely. Francesco and the others would be part of who he was for the rest of his life. The rest of my life, Dominic whispered aloud. As Dominic thought about the new people he'd be meeting tomorrow, the words of his great-grandfather... Francesco Cantori drifted back to him, lulling him to sleep. Open your heart, little one, he heard the old man tell him, and all that you need shall be yours.